I want to enjoy every day like it's your last day. Hello and welcome to Up Again, the show about overcoming life's challenges both on and off the ice. We get you some exclusive access to the biggest names in the skating world. And they share loads of inspiration with us and, you know, we get some practical advice out of it. We also play one or two fun games in the process. My name is Alma Smith and our guest this week almost needs no introduction because she is such a a speed skating superstar, 11 Olympic medals, the youngest winter Olympian to ever win gold for the Netherlands. It's the speed skating superstar, Irian Wurst. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So Irian, where are you at the moment? How are you? What's happening? You've had a bit of a break, haven't you? Yeah, we just had a little bit of a small holiday. And at the moment, I'm uh, back home and I'm uh, training already because it's uh, it's the Olympic season, and uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to that. So um, training already begun. You are the most decorated Olympic speed skater, and the list of achievements. I mean, it is it is frankly it's quite mind boggling. The first Dutch athlete to win five Olympic medals, youngest Dutch winner of. Um, a Winter Olympic medal, seven world all-round championships, 15 world single distances championships. I mean, the, the, the list is so staggering. And I'm sure people always do this in interviews where they just rattle off all of the stuff. When I see a list like that, my mind immediately goes to how, what is that secret to achieving at such a scale? What is your philosophy around that? Oh, my secret. I think I just really love what I'm doing. So I really love the sport. I really love training. And um, of course, I'm addicted to winning. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a little bit of love and a little bit of an addiction. Um, yeah, and I don't know, the years go by so quickly. So I really enjoy it. And of course, you enjoy it more when you have good years and you win win a lot but um yeah i don't know it's it's such a small community the speed skating world and it's really it's actually a little bit like family so yeah i really enjoy being around those people and um every day waking up and try to be the best version of yourself and try to um do better than the day before and i think that's like this game in your head and you're playing with your head and body and you want to improve every day so yeah I think that's the the little addiction and the love for the sport and that's so tough um do you do you rely a lot on um sports psychologists I mean how much of your training is up here and how much of it is is actually physical uh yeah most of all, of it is physical and I think I have my head is like strong since I was a little girl. Uh, but of course I, I, uh, I have some people I talk with, especially when, uh, when there are hard situations, when I, um, I won the Olympics when I was 19 years old and the year after that I won like three times a world title. But the year after that I was overtrained. And then it's like really hard because then, yeah, your body and your mind, they don't do what you want. And, I, uh, I saw people to talk about that. And of course, after uh, after Pauline uh, died, I had a lot of help with that too. And it's so important, I'm sure, for young athletes watching, watching your journey to see that it's, it's not only glory, it's not no. only triumph, it's not only winning gold. Um, have you got advice for anyone out there who looks at this and goes, oh, wow, she has actually really had to fight her way back from more than one challenge. Is there perhaps something that you would say to someone who wants to maintain the level of consistency that you've managed to do? I don't, I think that the, um, the best thing you can do is ask for help. 
don't try to figure it out on your own because all athletes, they're especially individual athletes, they are, I would say, too proud to ask for help and they think they can do it on their own. But sometimes you need some help and people are willing to help you. Um, take that advice, take that help and um, you don't have to do it on your own. So a lot of people out there who want to help you. So let's talk about Pauline. Um, you mentioned Pauline van Dijtekom, a very close friend of yours. Let's rewind back to January 2019. You're at the European Championships. Um, I mean, a week after the funeral of no, one actually, of you. Uh, two days after the funeral. Two days yeah. after the funeral. Yeah. And you have to compete? Yeah, but actually I don't know anything about it anymore. You don't know anything no, about it anymore? No. No. Did you just block it out? I think, yeah. I, I know that I was um, at the starting line of the 500. And um, we had the suit really nice with, um, I don't know the English word for it, the, the black band, which you yes, yes, wear yes. When, uh, when somebody has passed away. And uh, of course, Pauline's name was on it. And um yeah when it's your best friend and i was like the started would say like ready and I, I was going down and i saw the band and i saw the name and then i was totally off I was like i cannot do this how how i have to do this and then i don't know my brain shut off and i just did the tournament but actually i don't remember a thing wow so you were practically racing on autopilot would you say? Yeah, I know. I think it was too, it was too heavy for me, like mentally. Such a shock to like, yeah, I don't know. It was overwhelming, like all the emotions. And I was so sad. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just, wanted to be there and I don't want to give up and I just want to be there and skating for Pauline but um yeah it was the most hardest thing to do ever she um she died due to cancer she was your teammate and you go through this incredibly traumatic week where you suffer such a great and close and personal loss and you stand up and you compete. Um, that that is, I mean, it's so remarkable. Now, when you look back at footage or photos of that time, what what goes through your mind? Yeah, she was not my teammate anymore because she quit skating in 2012, but she was still my best friend. You know, when you have something, a problem, or you you call your best friend, like you all your secrets you know from each other it's it's more than like having family actually um so it's not only that week it's like she i don't know she's she knew she was sick in like june or july and that whole journey i was standing by her side and try to help her as much as i can and um i think we called every day and i visit her like a lot of times in a week, as much as I was, I was possible to do. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, I know it, it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But on the other hand, it was one of the most beautiful things I could do in my life. Like helping your best friend have really nice and hard conversations about life and that. Um, so it, it was not about skating anymore. It's about helping your best friend and seeing your best friend struggle and seeing your best friend sick. That was like really, that was really hard. And it took me, uh, it took me a, a lot of time to overcome that. And I'm still, it's still like a wound that like when we talk about it, I'm getting emotional and it's like, it will never go away, I guess. Wow, it's really, I mean, I'd read about you losing your friend and 
I've watched other interviews with you, but I can feel that this is this is still so raw. And I really appreciate you sharing this. Talk to me about the fact that in your personal life, you're going through this incredibly close encounter with death because you are you are staring at it with her. Um, you know, you are holding her hand through this incredibly painful experience. Does that change the way that you see what you were busy with on the ice at that stage? Did it change your perspective on competing? Yeah, it changed, it changed my perspective of life, actually. Because I think, like most people, like you think you're young and you've got this whole life in front of you and you're like, oh, now is, this is my career and then I'm going to gonna study again and I want to have children and then when I'm old and like you you plan your future a little bit in your head and uh of course Pauline did it too she has uh, she has a beautiful daughter and um she want to live for like become 90 or something and then all of a sudden in half a year she's gone like become sick and in half years it's it's so um, I'm, I want to enjoy every day like it's your last day because you don't know when it's done, when it's over. You, 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 you don't have to choose. They do it. I don't know who, but it's, it's, you, you cannot choose. So um, of course, I made skating the most important thing of my life. And now it's the most beautiful thing in my life. I really like what I'm doing and I enjoy every day of it. Um, but it's not like the most important thing anymore. I don't know how to, and of course I want to win because winning is uh, the, the best feeling there is, but it's not that, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's something, it, it's different when you see, when you, yeah. Uh, it, it's hard to give words on it. And then only a few weeks later, you win setting a track record at the Worlds in 1,500 meters. And everyone just goes, whoa. <laughs> yeah. What, what was that day like? That was the day that um, I won a win for Pauline. Mm -hmm. And um, that was my toughest race of my career because you don't want to win, you're not at the start line, win for yourself, but you want to win for somebody else. So I was never been so nervous at that day. And uh, I cried all morning. And then I was like, okay, focus. You have to get, get yourself together and go to the, to the ring. And um, at that day, uh, Pauline became world champion all around in 2008. And it was on February 10. And this day was also February 10, only 11 years later. So yeah, I really wanted to win the gold for Pauline. So it was, I was so nervous and the start went like totally, I messed it totally up. And then after 300 meters, I was like, okay, just, just do it and then it just happened and afterwards i gave the gold medal to pauline's daughter she so have it now so that's uh, the most beautiful thing i could do yeah and it's the most heartfelt honest way to pay tribute to your friend and in a way only you could do yeah yeah that was the that's when they ask me the most beautiful victory of my career, definitely it's, it's that one. Did it, in a way, the fact that you realized that there was more to life than skating, that that set you free to, to almost be a better competitor in a, in a strange, ironic way? No, I think it set me in a way to enjoy it more. Like, oh. you're this athlete like, like this and just focused and okay we've done a race we've done worlds go on to the next race and go on to the next one and now i'm a little bit more like open 
and enjoying things more. Who did you lean on in this time? Uh, Who helped my you? My girlfriend, Letitia. But she's a skater as well, so it was not always easy for her as well. Mm. She saw tremendous <laughs> loss in me and I was like, uh, I didn't enjoy anything anymore. And after the the sadness, there comes this, I don't know, anger of why? And why Pauline? And why the most beautiful people in the world? And But you, you never get answers to that. So um, then I go to the psychologist. Is that a good word for it? Mm -hmm. And uh, she helped me a lot because uh, you cannot do it on your own. You need some help with that. Mm. And what were the methods? I mean, do you have coping mechanisms that you learned, that you mastered in that time, that you still use in, you know, in, 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 on days where things aren't going the way you want them to? Mm. I don't know, because it's, Still, some days they're hard, and then you're heartbroken, and then you've got this grief, and you have to cry all the time. But, um, and I think just accept that this, it is like the way it is, um, accept that you're sad. I think that's the best thing to do. Just don't put it away because then it will come back at you like a boomerang and it hits you twice as hard. Um, I think that's the best thing I learned from, from it. So what do you do now when you're not skating to just get away from it all a bit? Just, you know, as you say, there's more to life um, yeah, visit, than what happens on the ice. Visit the uh, family and friends because now I've got time to do so. Um, with Corona, it's a little harder than normal because you or only visit uh, in your own. But um, yeah, I think uh, that's that's the thing I do the, I love the most, like visit family, friends, um, and normally go out on a boat, but it's still a little bit too cold for that, I guess. <laughs> are, you, are you seriously into sailing or is it just pleasure cruising stuff? Yeah, I, I was always sailing with Pauline, but uh, I got the boat like a sloop, it's uh it's not a sailing boat and um we go most of the times when it's not the weather is nice we go on the boat make the most of the great outdoors you've listed skiing as one of your hobbies as well yeah. are you as competitive out there on the slopes as you are on the ice no i like to go fast but uh it's not uh, i'm always like i don't want to break a leg or something i don't don't want to get injured by skiing so um there's always this little voice in the back of my head, like, watch out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course, that's not able to now because we are not able to travel. But next year, hopefully, we can uh, I go skiing again. It seems like you have been busy cycling, though. And you, I mean, you're not just one of those people who get out there and cycle to the shop. You have competed at the Dutch Road Cycling Championships three times. So it's obviously not good enough to just uh, be winning on the ice. You're also, uh, you're also a serious cyclist. Is there any sport you're not very good at? Uh, I think there are plenty. Uh, for <laughs> for uh, gymnastics. <laughs> um, yeah, gymnastics is not my thing. And but, swimming, but you guys... I, I cannot swim. I'm like, oh, uh, really? you know, the, the fish called seahorse like this. This is my leg. This is my upper body. And I go like this through the water. We need footage of that for Instagram, please. Can, <laughs> can you get your fiance to get onto that for us? No. <laughs> I want to see the seahorse in action as soon as swimming weather rolls around in the Netherlands. Um, Speaking of seahorses, I see that you're a big fan of penguins. Yeah. Why penguins? I, I love them so much. They're the most beautiful animals in the world. I've got this. Oh. You got one there? I got them here. 
Oh, cute. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I just love them. The way they walk, the way they swim. It's, I adopted actually one. We can adopt a penguin in the Netherlands, so we did. And um, yeah, it's, it's too bad you cannot hold them like a, like a, how do you say it? Animal at house. But uh, if yeah. I really <laughs> want to go once to, uh, to Africa, because they're on the beach there. So I want to lay on the beach with the penguins. You can swim with them on that beach as well. And they are so cute. They waddle in and out of the water yeah. and yeah. they just swim with people in the, in between the oh, rocks. Oh, that's my dream. I'm gonna do that at the Olympics for sure. For sure. You have had so many amazing seasons on the ice and we all can't wait to see what 2022 brings. So you want to win gold. Yeah, at Beijing 2022 and most people won't bet against you because I mean we've seen what you can do <laughs> uh, do you look over your shoulder at the youngsters coming through do you change the way you train and prepare now that you're more experienced and you know what to expect from an Olympic Games have you had to adapt in any way like how are you feeling about a year out mm, I think I'm in this uh, perfect team like I, I swapped three teams last year and now it's more of a sprinting team but I think it's good for me because it helps me with my speed for 1500 uh, and it's like a, it's a young team but we also get like uh, people the same age as me um, so I'm feeling really confident in the team feeling really happy in the team um, so I already switched my training a little bit towards more of speed instead of endurance. Um, and I'm always looking over my shoulder for the young new generation and they just inspire me. And in my team, I wanna help the young generation because of my experience. I wanna prepare them for what's it be to be on the Olympics, what it's like, uh, or what do you have to expect, how you, um, deal with a lot of pressure from the Dutch press because they're always there and they always want you to do, to win and otherwise it's not good enough. So um, yeah, I want to help them and share my experience. And on the other hand, I want to show the best part of me and say goodbye with the, the last gold medal, I hope. Anything that, I mean, outside of gold in Beijing, something you haven't yet accomplished that you've got on your list that's on your vision board yeah there was this uh, thing I don't have in my career it's uh, called world record <laughs> and uh, I want to accomplish it last year well we had the world single distance in Salt Lake City because you all, of course you have to do it on like high altitude uh, but um I won, but I didn't want in a world record. So I think um, I will be the skater who won a lot, but never skated a world record because I think it's hard this year. I don't know, Corona wise, if we come overseas and we're allowed to race on high altitude. So uh, if not, then I don't think I will make it anymore. That's too bad. Okay, well, yeah, we're all yeah, crossing our fingers. Um, I'd rather skate, a, I'd rather win an Olympic medal than a skating world record. And I want to know what we can look forward to from you once you've retired. You know, what is your plan? What do you want to do? What is it you look forward to post professional speed skating? Yeah, I don't have a like plan yet. Let's a lot of things I want to do um, and of course I'm just like when I quit I think a lot of things will come back to me but um, uh, one of the things is like I want to tell my story to people like trying to help them with my story um, trying to uh, want to help young talent, talented athletes and uh, not only speed skating but other sports as well because I think with my experience I can help them um, I want to study and 
I only know the Dutch word for it, so I don't know <laughs> if I pronounce it, if, the, if there's actually a, an English word for it. But um, it's a study when you help young people um, by movement. So, um, for example, young people with autism, they are like stuck and they are not able to play with other people or other children. And I think you can help them not by only talking, but like to get them move, moving. Um, What's the Dutch word? Psychomotorische therapie en bewegingsagogie. Ah, uh, psychometric therapy. Yeah, and movement therapy. Yes, yeah. yes. Movement therapy I is... I don't think it's in English. Uh, but it is an, a really interesting field of research and study because it, it helps people who are not verbal, as you say, um, yeah. autistic and, and, and other people with, with special needs. Um, I mean, that is a, that's a fantastic ambition for someone as yourself who, who really knows how to push the human body in order to get the most out of it. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm really looking forward to do. And of course, I wanna, one day I want to become a mother as well. It's time for you to take on a challenge of a different kind. We love to play this game with everyone we have on the Up Again show. It's called the Wrong Answers Only Quiz. You need to answer as many of these as you can in as short a period possible. Okay. Okay. So here's a, here's a test question. What's your name? Wrong answer only. Uh, Letitia Dion. Okay, cool. You've got it down. Question one. Name a vegetable that's green. Uh, carrot. Zebras are what color? Uh, red and blue. Snow white and the seven? Uh, the seven uh, penguins. What is your sporting discipline? Uh, being lazy. If I yawn, it means I'm? I'm sleepy. Ooh. Yeah, but no, no. If I'm yawn, I'm in the big best shape of my life. So. Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> the fastest animal is the? Turtle. What is the opposite of walking? Uh, I don't know. Running? How do you spell skate? Wrong answers only. Uh, B I K E. <laughs> Speed skate is love too. Love to uh, play tennis. What does a cow sound like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter is a what? Is a speed skater. What does the word bamboozle mean? I have no clue. What do you brush your hair with? My toothbrush. What planet do we live on? Uh, Venus. And name an animal that has four legs. The penguin. Name the colors on the Dutch flag. The blue. Oh no, they're uh, red, yellow, and black. <laughs> Almost got you there. Almost got you there, but well done. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for two truths and a lie. I'm so excited about this uh, because I've got a feeling you're going to entertain me quite a bit. It's your responsibility to bring three interesting or unusual facts or anecdotes to the table. And I have to decipher which of the three is in fact a lie. Two truths and a lie. Let's go. Irian Wurst. My favorite fruit is Brussels sprouts with baked banana every night before I go to bed. I clean my Olympic medals, my gold medals, clean the dust out of it. Only the gold ones. 
only now yeah only the gold ones okay and my first actually job was working in a snack bar baking fries and frikandella so the the snack bar that you worked at what was it called snack uh, oh i did just not uh, able to uh, ask questions back uh it's called the hexahood the hexahood the yeah. witch's hat yeah. <laughs> and and you and you only clean the gold medals yeah and the banana and the brussels sprouts what do you do you make that in the pan yeah and then you, you just eat the it like that in the pan and you put the brussels sprouts you cook them with banana no you cook them separately and then you put them together on a plate and is the banana like cut in little wheels? No, the banana is cut in half. And then you eat the Brussels. Do you do you say do you put salt or anything or no. pepper? Nothing, just just the banana and the Brussels fruit. I really hope that that's the wrong one, but I think the one about the medals isn't true. I think the lie is the thing about dusting off the medals. I'm going with that. You're correct. Yeah. I'm correct. You eat Brussels sprouts one. and banana. Yeah, it's my favorite. Why? It's the best there is. Mm. You have to try How it. often? Like uh, in winter sometimes because it's like a winter. A winter snack. Is this like the kind of thing that makes yeah, you feel it's better? It's actually a real dinner. A real dinner. Banana and Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you put meat to it, but meat as well yeah like on the side what kind of meat do you put with this like uh this uh this meat you have to cook for like a really long period like five six hours oh my gosh i i mean i thought i liked dutch food now i'm really worried about coming for dinner at your house <laughs> um but thank you so much for sharing that with us it boost two truths and a lie you um certainly provided plenty of entertainment. Uh, if you ever need travel tips to come swim with the penguins here in South Africa, you know where to find me. And thank you so much for sharing so vulnerably your story and your experiences with us. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for joining us on Up Again. We will bring you more amazing stories right here next month. Head over to isu.org forward slash up again for more of these stories. Listen to the podcast and use the hashtag up again in your posts. Tell us how you get back up when life knocks you down. <laughs>